everybody, it's Valerie, Valerie Walls Fine Arts. I'm here in my basement studio, 10 o'clock on June, uh, it's Thursday, June 4th. Um, and um, today we're going to draw a chickadee, which is the main state bird. All right, and it's also with pine cones, which I think are the main state flower. Yes, they are. It's a very main um, centered uh, piece. Okay, mm. so. I am going to do my color picture. I'm going to start my color picture out with a gold. What I'm always suggesting to you is to use a light color or draw lightly when you start out because um, you're going to want to adjust things. You're not going to get everything perfectly and that's part of getting better at it is figuring out how to fix your mistakes. So this um, chickadee is, is really pretty simple. It's, it, it's three parts, body, head, and beak. And um, what do we get there, Daphne? What's that shape? Circle. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's not a perfectly round ball. So I mean, if you get it, if you're thinking circle and you get it a little wonky, you're all set because that's kind of what the shape is. It's a little. We're gonna go a little flatter on the top and a little flatter on the bottom and kind of round it out. And to make it look feathery, when you do your drawing strokes, if you kind of do them in that direction, it will it will kind of do that. And then what about um, his little head? Also a circle? Yeah, kind of, right? It's just a round shape. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything perfect. The thing is, is the back of it is a slanted, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a slanted line coming right off the corner of that um, body. And then there's a little bit of shoulder on this side. His face goes in a little bit here, and that's turning his head a little bit. And then a teensy weensy little beak. And what shape are the pine cones, Daphne? Circles. Yeah, they're circles. If you make them ovals, that's great. If you make them triangles, there's probably still know what they are, right? Um, that's pretty much it. And he does have a little bit of tail feathers. We're going to do a little bit different because this seems like it's sticking out of the side of him. Yeah. I don't know. It's a little weird. But, all right. So what the one thing is, is I've got this great big piece of paper. So in my case, I want to make him big. I don't want to have a whole ton of background in a little teeny tiny bird, right? All right. And um, there's a lot going on with the pine cones that I could probably fill half of the, my page or, you know, kind of, you know, with some, with some space. So I'm going to get them over that way a little bit. All right. First thing I'm going to start with is um, a line for right about here. Okay. Because that way I know I have to fit the head in. I'm going to go over on the, on the right side a little bit, but no way over here. Right around here. And I'm going to draw a line with my gold right about like this. Okay. So, you know, just, you know, up in the upper half of your picture, you know, if this is the middle, up in the upper half, a little bit over to the right, okay? Same thing here. If I found the middle, I'm going to go a little bit to the right and up a little bit, and there's my line, okay? Then I want to decide how, he's a little fat. If you go a long way, you're going to have a, a tall, skinny chickadee. The closer you get these lines together, the more he's going to be a fat, little, plump, little furry. Okay, which might be what you want. But keep that in mind. If you want them to be short, I mean, plump and, and cute looking, then you might want to make these lines not too far apart. Okay, so I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to kind of round it around like that, and round it around like this. And this, these lines, I'm going to cover up with my black. Okay, I'm going to put a little tiny bit, very lightly, of my gold along the edges of this a little because he has a little bit of a pinky orange color and that's not something that we can add at the end because he's after we put the black on there because the black's going to mix in it's going to look gross so we have to put these light colors on there first okay there you go so i'm finding here i'll say well that's about the bottom and then i'm sketching this out so it'll be a little different here in the black okay but i might just kind of soften that a little so part of it will look a little brighter white than the rest of it okay shape if it turns out that the body seemed too tall what you do is you just have to make the head bigger to make the bodies look smaller okay it's all about the proportions you can always adjust it's harder to make things smaller though it's a little trickier okay so what I want to do maybe I'll find if this is the middle of my bird that is about the peak of his head, okay? So I'm going to like look at the middle of the bird and say, well, that's a probably about where I want that to be. I'll make a nice dark line, okay? From that, 
I'm going to just round it down to the corner. So I'm going to go like this. Okay. Um, his head, I didn't do this, eh, it's more than half the size of his body. So if I find a little more than half the size of his body, that tells me how tall I want to make this head. Okay. I didn't do that with the first one. but So if you judge it, if I measure from here to here, and I bring that down, and that's a little bit more than half, then you know you're on the right track. If it's not, you can either add a little more on the head, if you get a little tiny head. And, and you don't want that, because I've seen that, and it, it, it's not as cute. Although birds do have little heads. Or you can, if it's the other way around, add on to the bottom. Okay? So, remember, we wanted this little divot that comes in here. So maybe what would be easier is to start here, come in a little, and then round that around. Okay? So start in here. Um, I, before I do anything else, I'm going to take care of the peachy orangey color, okay? I'm going to put a little bit of gold here, and a little bit of gold, and then a little bit of a really light pink. This is the one that, yeah, it's called Scarlet, but that is not Scarlet, as far as I'm concerned. I guess the Dutch think it is, so, you know, I guess they know better than me. I wouldn't say it. I'd say what? That's not even peach. That's like... Shell? Yeah. Yeah. Like shell pink. Okay. And if I put a little bit... You don't have to do this either. You can make it white. But if you're going to, this is the time to do it. I put a little bit on here. Not very much. Okay. And then I take a white that I want to be clean. I'm using pastels. I'm using uh, mostly this Van Gogh or Van Gogh brand um, pastel. And they're oh crap, I just broke it. And they're pretty inexpensive, but I think they're pretty decent. They're, the thing is, is that they're really fat, so it's hard to do fine, fine things. So when I take this white and I can blend that right in the middle, it'll kind of blend it into a light, a nice warm. A little bit here. Actually, yeah, it's mostly black on the top of his head, so I'm going to put too much there. Okay? I remember somebody doing this when they painted it, and it looks really good, so I'm going to do it with mine. All right, take your, um, take a brown. Okay, I am going to go with this brown right here, kind of a light uh, reddish brown. Um, the thing, if you want to make him look like he's on the stick, the branch, but his feathers are kind of flopping over, when you do the top line of this, the branch, have it go right to his body and then kind of come out on the other side, right down low, and then do the other part of the branch like this, and he'll look like he's sitting on it a little bit more. And we want to get this pretty skinny. Okay, we'll color that in afterwards. Um, so we want a couple of ovals for the pine cones. And this one, ha I mean, you can make as many as you want. Um, if you have a lot of space left over, you want, might want to make more. Um, I'm going to make kind of like a steep rainbow. And then I'm going to bring it down like this, a little bit pointy. Okay. So I'll have to do it in the other direction, so it's going to be a very um, cartoony smile. I guess I want to make it a little bit bigger, okay? And then maybe I'll start out here, and I'll come back in, and that'll kind of make it a little more that shape. If I didn't make them big enough, I would just go around the outside and color a little bit bigger, okay? I'm going to... The, the thing about any, any shape like this is that there's usually a light side and a dark side. And then it also has the dark, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, like scales? Yeah, to show the... Well, I guess they're petals. Are they petals? Because they're flowers? I don't know. That's an interesting thought. Isn't it where the seeds go in between them? Yeah, they're going in there, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like they're petals. Petals do fall over. Yeah, I think that's cool. Um, you know, if you look, if you squint your eyes, you can see this uh, a lot lighter here, a lighter here, and darker underneath. And this is the lighter one. So I'm going to put a little light here. And I'm going to, I decided to do the scales. So I put a little on the top here and a little on the top here. And I'm going to do the scaling afterwards because when I did it the other time, I did it first and I don't like how that came out. Um, I'm going to take a little bit darker brown, not a lot darker, and I'm going to do the lower half. And when I do that, I want to go over the edges a little. Okay. If you can't, you know, if you don't know which one's lighter or darker with what you're doing, you know, maybe you're using purple, who knows. Um, just make two different colors. That's really kind of the secret is just changing the colors up. This is really, really pretty light. So I'm going to put a little bit of white on my goldy parts here. Okay. I should probably color that right in. Now, what do you think is the next thing to do, Daphne? Um, the background. It is the background. Good job. Why? So we don't get the black all up in the background. So we don't get the black in the background, and also so that when we draw on all of the pine needles, they we don't have to color around those to get the background in there. Okay? So... Pick whatever color you want for the background. You can do anything that you want to. If you do black or dark blue, what's going to happen, Daphne? Um, the, it's going to be too dark for the pine cone, for the pine needles. Oh, and for the black. Okay. Yeah, you're not even going to see the bird. So don't pick something dark. You want something lighter. You probably don't want let, you know this color green because then your things aren't going to show. If you do blood red... It'll be a little, if you go kind of dark, it'll be a little hard to get these pine needles to show on top. So I would find something in the lighter range. But if you, if you like red and you can make orange work, try that instead. Okay? Um, this is a pretty dense color. You know, this is, what I'm going with is lighter than that, but that's what I'm going to use anyway. Okay, so go ahead. And if you can't be bothered to color the whole thing in, oh, I got to do it down here. At least get next to your objects, your main parts. Okay, and then if you need to, you can just kind of brush it out and just be kind of random in how you fill in the rest. But we're trying to set up the contrast of these different colors because part of part of drawing, especially painting, is to see how the same color looks totally different, has a totally different effect when it's next to another color. Like say your living room is gold and or your or your couch is gold and when you put a purple pillow on it it looks one way and if you put a white pillow on it it looks different if you put a black one it looks different if you put a yellow one or an orange one on there everything looks different and that's sort of what you know that's fun that's the interesting thing is to see how different colors look against the same thing so that's kind of what we're doing here. So you want to get it in there. Uh, I guess that's like right there. Okay, right around my stuff. If I if I wanted to, you know, and I could. I think the idea too is that it's against. Um, well, that it's against maybe a pine tree. This like one little branch, and maybe what's supposed to be happening is that um, oh. the rest of the tree is a little bit out of focus. So, I mean, I could put a little of a more foresty green with this, too. And that would help to show that, have that feeling. Yes? Yeah, I didn't quite get that. That makes sense. I think that's kind of the idea, but, you know. Did you bring that green back from Tesoro? 
Oh yeah. Where is it? It's in that it's in that box over there where all the paint is. Oh. Daphne, did I already say this? That Daphne and I are getting ready, we're gonna do a new mural for Carolina's Sports and Spirits. Sports and Spirits and um all right, what was I gonna do? Oh, down here. And um we're gonna do that live starting well, next week. Oh. What? Not like live online. Uh, oh. not unless somebody else wants to film it. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. just live. Will. Maybe we will for those of the just people that want to stay home and stay safe. Because I believe in that. Yeah. But entertain the people who would like to dine outside starting they're gonna open, I believe, next Monday. And we're gonna be there with our masks on. And we're yeah. going to uh, do a little painting to give you something nice to look at while you're sitting under the Chamberlain Bridge. Hopefully. I'm getting excited. Mm. And I'm going to, uh, yeah. It's going to be a good time. It is. I mean, it's a big, it's a big wall. All right. So here... How did this bug get in? It's a wasp or a hornet. It is? Yeah. How did it get in? Do I have a hole in my screen? I don't know. I left the door open a little bit. Maybe I can see it now. I don't know why it would come down here, though. What about that? Oh. Oh, I also did make another dark green, too. Did you find it? Yeah. I did some nice uh, grape. Is that what they were? Yeah, grape leaves. A grapevine. I should have done all of those. But a grapevine um, up at uh, Tesoro. And so I'm going to do some grain. It's nice and warm today. Yep. Okay. We ready to pull this thing together now with all the good parts? Mm -hmm. All right, my little birdie down here, I guess this would be the time to, to look because say, you know, you, you didn't quite get the divot here the way that you want, you want your bird a little plumper, you know, now is the time to look and say, so that when you put the black on there, you can adjust that. Okay. I'm going to put a little, a little dark brown in my stick here. It becomes, a, it becomes a stick when it falls on the ground and you throw it in the fire. Okay. All right, let's do it. Right? I'm ready. I need a black. There we go. So this black is, like I said, kind of big and clunky, but I'm going to make it work. I'm going to get a little bit heavier with the black around the body. Are they black all over or are they kind of gray? I think they're pretty black. Yeah, they're kind of black. They have a black head, but I kind of think their body is kind of... Oh, it is a big wo warnet. A big warnet. <laughs> big wasp that wants out. Oh, he's going to have to wake my dog. Okay. Um, so first of all, I want to divide his face up. Okay? So don't look here, and then you can see that it kind of is right in the middle. All right? Um, Maybe I'll find the middle part and I will round a little this way and round a little this way. And he looks a little bit like he has a cap on. And then what you want to do is draw yourself a pretty good sized circle. Not that his eye is going to be that big, but you want to have saved that spot. Okay? Can't go back and get it later. And then coming right off of this little line here, you're going to make a little beak. And my guy has his little nose sticking up in the air. Smell it. Okay, then see how the, it kind of comes over his face. Find about the middle here and, br and brush your pastel or crayon or whatever you're using or pencil kind of down that direction. Okay, 
And then you can kind of make a little dashy line that goes like this. Okay. I'll do that here. So I found about the middle of the head and I made a little kind of very wide smile. So it sort of looks like he has a little hat on. Okay. And then I take that line and continue that out and make a little skinny pointy beak. You know, he's got a little guy. Okay. If you happen to make the beak way too big, you're just going to have to go around and add on to your bird to make the bird bigger so the beak doesn't seem so big. Okay? It's doable. I feel like I need to let that guy out of here. Hang on. Let's see. I just need that. There you go. There you go. You go! Get out! Get out! There you go. Get out! Alright, we set we set him free. I'm actually allergic to hornets, so I was, you know, relatively whatever humane of me. Is that what you would say? Sure. Okay. Good. Now we're gonna oh wait, whoops, don't let me forget. Don't forget an eye, it's towards the front a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna color in his little hat. And when I do it, if I make the edges a little spiky, it will look a little feathery. If you do it smooth. That's good too. All good. Okay? But I definitely want to make his head black. <laughs> that was making a lot of noise. Yeah, it was very loud. I think it's because they're stressed. I'm sure he was stressed. Yeah. Alright. There. Cute already, right? Adorable. I like his little That's what they say. Tiki tiki dee dee. Maybe we can hear one right now. I hear a siren. That's not what birds. you want to hear. I I don't really know about that much about what birds make for sounds. I know what a crow sounds like though. Yeah. And I know what a chicadee sounds like. And I know what a um what do you call it? Um keep wanting to say squirrel, but I mean a seagull. A seagull. <laughs> the squirrels nice. of the bird world. Yeah. Okay. Oh, whoops. Let me get this guy just. So I found the middle, like at his neck, and then I'm going to bring that beak part down like this and keep going right across. He has that nice little piece of black. So I'll put a little black here too, just to kind of outline that. Okay. So I'll go around the outside. I'm going to go a little bit thicker on my outside. But I'm going to leave the bottom, I think, light to uh, make it look like the belly feather is just hanging over the... We do a, a cardinal that sits on a branch like that, and it really always looks good when the belly kind of hangs over the branch. All right. Oh, you know what I forgot? That's just black. Yeah, it's be fine. Okay, so same deal. Um, I'm going to start a little on the small side in case I want to add a little more. But kind of like that. And then I'm going to connect to this little piece in here. His little chin. And then his little shoulder. So if I want, that's all right. I'm going to bring a little shoulder here. I think that looks pretty squat and cute, I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's one of the things that, you know, there's not only one way to draw anything at all. It just would be a joke. But um, there's some little tips that... And kind of forcing yourself to consider your background early, early on, whether you're painting or drawing. Um, it's just like learned from doing, I mean, I can remember painting and drawing in preschool on an easel with my three colors. So I've made a lot of mistakes and I've figured out some solutions to these mistakes. So I'm trying to like 
do things the same way enough so that you might get pick up some of those habits and that way you'll save yourself some mistakes. I kind of like how he's going like this. Isn't he kind of going? Yeah. He's doing a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I forgot um, the tail feathers. So what I'm going to do, instead of this part that's going way out there, which I guess I get what's happening, I'm going to have a little tiny triangle of it right here and have it come out here. I'm not going to have this little blue space in there. So I'll find about where the middle is, and I'm going to just bring... Because I kind of think you have to have it, but you don't have to do it with sticky ink all the time, I guess. Okay? But if it looks funny, decide if you need more, more of the feathers on the left side, getting more towards the back of him. Because it might you don't want it to seem like it's sticking out of the side of him. And this 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 area is where it would adjust that. So when you look at them, if it looks like they looks like they're sticking out of the side, add a little more on the left side. Okay? So here, I'll do it here. And it wouldn't be very long because, you know, it's in perspective. So his tail feathers are farther away. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so with his eye, what we want to do is we want to leave a little bit of the white. But ideally, this is kind of, where's a, I have a white chalk. No, I guess I don't. All right. I'll draw it right here. But what you're kind of doing, or not with that, here we go, okay, is that we have a circle, right? And what we want to do is leave a little, if he's looking in this direction, we want to leave the white of his eye over on the left. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw like this, and this part you're going to put a black circle in, but you're going to leave a little, you're, going to do, you're not going to color it the way that I'm doing it, because obviously I'm coloring white on black, so it's opposite. But it's going to look kind of like that, right? Like a waxing crescent moon. Speaking of that, it's almost a full moon. And tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, we're going to do a nice summery uh, full moon picture. Okay? All right, so I'll start small. Does that look right, Daphne? Yeah. Yeah? What? No. His eye, does that look right? No. No. Sorry. Does that look right? It's a little bug eye. It's still a little bug eye. So if you don't leave much white, and then it looks pretty, pretty normal, okay? Pretty good. But you can start small. There. I don't even have a little white in the middle. Okay. So let's do something with these pine cones. You want to have colored them in now because that way you don't have to try to color around your dark lines. I'm going to take a really dark brown. This one is called oh, sepia. Okay. I can remember getting my list of paint. Actually, I think it was when I was at Colorado State and I took a painting class. You know, I did not know what I was getting into, and I had to get oil paints. And he, and you know, when you when you get your paints, you really need to get a warm and cool of every color. You get every brown. So I mean, it is. I don't know. You know, like twenty five paint colors, and it was even in like nineteen eighty four. I bet I spent one hundred and twenty dollars on paint. Wow. And you're thinking, why do I need all these stupid colors? But that's cool. That's not cool. Just to keep it. Okay, so we want to have some little um, petals, or whatever we're going to call them. I should have looked it up. Should have got some fun facts on pine cones. Um, there, these are just circles. So a lot of times when I've done this with the kids, what we did was just made connecting, touching circles, kind of like you're making grapes. And then go back and put a little highlight in a bunch of them. I don't know what we'll be able to do. Um, if you want to do it a little more carefully, I think they would kind of build on each other. And you can kind of, I think you want to build. So you kind of work your way down like scales. 
They're a little boxy. Maybe I'll make them a little boxier instead of rounded. Yeah, that's probably better. Right? Mm. This is a part where some people love doing things like that and they make it nice and small and neat and it'd be like a really great accent. Mine looks like a, um, a brown, uh, what's that thing you throw? Grenade. <laughs> yeah, kinda. But since it's not, it's a pine cone. And because there's going to be pine needles around it. <laughs> what do you call that kind of reasoning? Deductive reasoning? When you take in all the, a bunch of other things and then, or is it like circumstantial evidence? Mm, I don't know. Mom. You don't know? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a little extra brown down on the bottom. This is pretty dark. You can't really see the shapes and stuff, so I don't do that. Darker in here, gives it a little shake. Right? Oh, I'm gonna do them down here. Okay, let me see. Maybe I'll do it differently this time. I'll make them bigger, I think. My palms are cold. Mm. It has a lot to do, uh, oh, this is a thing. If something looks funny about your picture or your pine cones, it could very easily be the proportion of the size of your pine cone versus your bird, okay? Because these pine cones are, you know, about the same size as the body, okay? So if you have little tiny pine cones, it might make your bird appear to be enormous, okay? Because your brain will be like, oh, well, I know what size a pine cone is. Or you may be, it's, there's some kind of plant that has really teeny tiny pine cones. So you could, mm -hmm. you could have tiny ones. If, and, there's, and pine cones are also like, I mean, there's a huge, huge ones. But I mean, even around here, you can get the long, skinny ones that are, that are bigger. So it's hard to say exactly what size they should be, but it, I've seen that happen where it was looked really weird because the pine cones were too little, okay? Which it would be pretty easy to make them bigger. If you're going to make them bigger, do it now before you do your um, uh, pine needles, okay? And the pine needles are kind of the same deal as doing the whiskers. Why am I putting the thing in the background? Oh, well, okay. And what that means is I have two... I have two dark shades of green, and I think I'm also going to throw in a light one. Okay, I have a blue green, and then a brownish green, and then I have a light green. Okay, and this one actually has a little orange on there. Uh, this is what we did sometimes when we painted this too: is that it has been pre-painted with or underpainted with an with a peachy orange. This color that's here is underneath everything, which is which is always really delicious to paint. Um, a color on top of something really opposite and makes it looks really good. Um, so you want to start at it and go out. But I'll tell you, I'll show you this, okay? If I do this, does that look right, Daphne? No. Why? They're too short. They're too short. Pine needles are super long, so you want them to be long things. The other thing about it is, what if I just did it like that? Even if I made them longer, what's wrong? Too straight? Too well, far apart? They're too far apart, okay? They grow in like, if you pick them, there's not one pine, pine needle on all these different spots. There's like a little cluster of them, like a tassel. Oh, I think they're too long. Oh, yeah. Um, and so you want to get them in a group. You know, they're like this. So, which is easier anyway. So say right, maybe now I'll use a different color, but I put a few in there with that color, and then I'm going to put, I'm going to put some glue right over my little bird so he looks tucked right in there. But I want to put a bunch of them all in a group together, okay? Not just a few and then a few someplace else. I mean, if that's the way you want to do it because that's just your style and that's what makes you happy, then that's great. But if you want it to look a little more realistic and you're like, why doesn't it look realistic? That's probably why. Because I have seen people do a lot of pine needles. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, they could be going behind your, um, I think I put a little couple of light ones in there. Looks like, all right, and then I want to imagine, you know, some other ones. You know, it also gives you kind of an excuse to sort of fill up a space if you have a lot of empty space because you make kind of a little bird. All right. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, all right, so down here, I'll do that, and then we'll call it good. If you, um, again, tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, which is Friday night, that's sort of my plan, is to have a weekend evening class. Um, and, you know, you can do it with some colors. You can do it with black and white. It's going to be kind of dark, so that would be fine. And uh, tell your friends. Share this. Share it as a post. You know, I won't be mad. Share your pictures with me. I love to see them. Uh, if you'd like to make a donation, there's a link right there in blue. There you just click on that. And you can leave me a little token. Or a big token. <laughs> and um, what else? Mm, can I find you, find you on Venmo? Oh, you can find me on Venmo at ValerieWalls9. Love that Venmo, I love it. It's cool. Do you think you'll be doing any Zoom classes? Zoom parties? Um, if you're interested in getting a, your own group together and having a little um, you know, time where you can you can talk with each other and do a little picture, um, I've done that. And I mean, I've been doing painting parties, but we can do it online. And it was super fun. It was really fun. We had a great time. And then you can kind of hold up your picture and say, I don't like this color, what can I do, or whatever. And I can look right at it and see, because it's so um, space age, our technology. Is this good? Are we good? I think we're good. Okay. Um, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see some of you um, tomorrow. And then, if not, I should see you um, next Tuesday and Thursday again at 10. Okay? All right. Have a great day. And... You know, love your fellow man and woman and child and animal and all that kind of crap. An alien or whatever. Hey, Becky. Tina. <sighs> Alicia. Louise. Miss you guys. Air Green. Hey. Oh, does that mean my pals Sophia and Anna are watching? Miss you kids. Hey, Jenny. Jenny and Louise are watching. I wonder if they're having a little FaceTime at the same time. That would be cute. All right. Hi, Mom. See you guys tomorrow. Thank you. I mean, not tomorrow. Yeah, I guess, yeah, tomorrow.